Hello, hi, and welcome to the next video in our Unity tutorial series. We are going to talk about winning and losing a level, and um, for that we are going to use so-called triggers. So that is pretty similar to what we've already done, but there's some more details here and there, which I will let you know in the next 10 minutes. So that's the level that we have so far. There will be two conditions um, for winning and losing. Winning, you have to reach a goal. So you have to touch a trigger, so-called. A trigger could also be a bullet from an enemy, a button you press, um, a plate that you step on, an area you enter. Everything that should trigger another event. In our case, the event will be winning the level. Right? That will be our goal here. The second thing is when we fall off the platform, when the character just falls down to infinity, uh, we are going to lose the game. We are not going to implement a pop-up or something right now. We will have a couple of videos dedicated for this. Um, right now we just want to lay the first, the foundation for it. So what we will do is, um, the first will be losing. Right? Because that's more simple right now, which has nothing to do with triggers, we're going to make a very, very simple thing. But very important, uh, what most games have is a so-called game controller. Right? Let me just get that wrong if I don't know. Yeah, game controller, exactly. That's the right termination, uh, yeah, termination for it. A game controller. So in a level, that's the thing that controls. Hey, winning, losing, lives, uh, what's the current mana, what the stuff. Right? It controls everything right um, and that we are going to create it's just going to be an empty object here we can create an empty object and that will be our game controller right i will just reset the transform the transform doesn't matter i will just reset it so it sits in the middle doesn't really matter so that is the one that is going to control uh, a lot of features in the end so this game controller does not have a physical shape it doesn't need to it's just for really supervising everything but it will get scripts it will get scripts in our case the first one we want is win lose so the when we win or when we lose respectively this will be triggered right so the trigger will actually act on this one here the trigger could be whatever now they are all going to act on this function here so which will be a global function which we will access everywhere right Therefore, this win-lose function, as we have it, this one here, I don't want a start, I don't want an update in there. Right? What I want are two public functions. If you make a new public function, public, in our case, it's going to be void for now, and then win level. Right? Open brackets, open curly brackets, there we go. So this function, will be called whenever we win the level that could be any conditions right that's a global condition right now we can't call everywhere because it is public other functions can also use that other classes can access this one here triggers can access that uh, right now i just want to simply debug log you win that's it for now the same of course i want to do with losing so i just grab that control c control v and then it's not win level but lose the level and then you lose so pretty simple pretty simple pretty easy for now those functions are sitting in win lose right now those sit in our game controller later on we will do more things than just put a debug message out we will have a pop-up we will go to the next level stuff like that for now we have limited time so win lose that is our global script here now for losing we want to do losing. How do we evaluate that? Simple. On the player, we have the player movement, right? We have the player movement. I could simply put it in there. Let's actually put it in there because that's the one we have and it kind of fits in there. Uh, now let's make, let's make a new one. <laughs> um, player triggers. Let's say player triggers. Let's make that a, whoops player triggers let's make that a new function and let's open that one i don't want to use the other one because it's already quite complex and we want to have it sorted a bit so there we have our player triggers and here very simple we don't need the start we just need the update 
And for losing, I just want to evaluate if our position is like if we're below the level. So if our position, which is in transform, the transform is the rotation of the object, the position of the object, the scale of an object in the room dot position. That is, of course, the position dot y, which is on the y axis, which is the one that goes straight up. And there I want to evaluate if that is smaller than minus 10, for example, 0 0.0f for float value. If that is the case, right, if that is the case, I want to call that function here, right, which is in another function. We need to link that later on. First step, there's a simpler method of doing it first step right now and more efficient what we will do right now is we are going to import that script to our player triggers so there will be a public right and that one now i can say win lose so i can actually choose a script a class that we have somewhere else in the project and that will be our win lose win lose script now i can say this win lose script if we are below 10 uh, minus 10 in the y position win lose script dot and now I can get my lose level function I can just say lose level and it will auto complete it here open brackets because it's a function and closing it with the uh, semicolon so right now if the transform of the object is negative 10 in the y level we are going to call the function there's one thing left to do you will see now in the player triggers, we have to select the win-lose script. We can either just grab it from the game controller here. It's there. So I can just grab it from the game controller, put it in here. Or we can let the game decide, the, the Unity decide. If you look, click on that little target icon right next to the win-lose script, we see, oh, we only have one of those in our uh, scene right now. So I can select this. Now it's automatically linked. So if I go to my console now and I press the play button, you will see if I fall down and negative 10 will trigger the you lose. One problem we have right now, it gets triggered every, every single execution of the game, every frame. So we don't want that, right? We don't want that. So in our win lose function, let's make it so it can only be triggered once which is we are going to make a private variable, which is only available in the win lose because no one else needs it. Private um, game, uh, private bool for a boolean, yes or no, true or false, and then game ended. So that one will be true when the game ended, right? So I will say here, if the game ended is not true with an exclamation point before it that now means if the game has not ended then curly brackets say that we lose and also take the game ended and say yes the game has ended that is true so that's what we want here i will just take that and actually copy it and put it in the win as well and change the win so it doesn't matter how the game has ended, the game has ended. So when we do that, you will see I fall down the platform and it will only be triggered once a single time. So whoop, and only be triggered once. Perfect. So next thing is we want to add a trigger condition for winning. Now we've got the losing, which is negative 10. I want the winning, which will be on a, like on a 3D object. Let's make it so that we have to touch a sphere in the end, right? There will be this little cube. I'm just putting it in a nice spot here. I'm resetting the position, putting it somewhere here so that we have to jump into it in the first level, making it a bit bigger. We could give it a nice material now. Let's give it a nice material. Let's make a new, a new material. In materials, I will make a material for the goal. Uh, material that is the goal material you that should be well now now i will just make that like a light blue yeah nice light blue let's make it fade a little bit and then let's put that on the goal there we go maybe let's make it green gold's always green that's perfect sticky material is also green now let's make that yellow 
So yeah, here we go. Pretty easy. Ha, huh, that's how you use prefabs. So that one here right now is a sphere. The problem with the sphere is the following. If I now start the game, oh, we're almost at 10 minutes. Sorry, I'm rushing now. If we hit it, we're getting stuck. You see, I cannot go through it. What we need to do is we need to make it a trigger here. On the goal that we have, I will make it a sphere collider. It is there. It's now just a collider. If we make it a trigger, we can actually go through it. So if I go through it, you will see I can go through it because it's a trigger. It will call events. So it will get recognized by the game, but we can slide through it. Good. Now, if the player hits that thing, we want to call the function in our game controller that the game has been won. So what I want to do is I could do that on the player now or on the sphere itself. I would say it makes more sense to put it on the sphere. So uh, I will make a new script, which I will call just simply goal. Put that on the sphere. Uh, open it. Oops, where is it? I will open it up. Right? Open it up. We need to do the following again in player triggers, right? In player triggers. So we could have put it in player triggers, but I want to have it in the goal so we can use as many goals as many places as we want. So what I want is, again, we need the public win-lose script in here. So I don't need the update. I don't need this public win-lose script. And what we also need now is we need to add that trigger event, which is on trigger enter. On trigger enter means as soon as the player enters it, right? Now I can just make on trigger enter. As soon as something hits that sphere, I can just go again with win lose script dot win game or win level. That's what I called it. And that is done now. So now what we will see is the following in the console. When the player hits the uh, sphere, we will win the level. Boink. And we, yeah, what you can see is a tr classic mistake. That is now an error because I have not linked the win lose. So on the goal, I got to click and of course select our game controller again, because that is where the win lose conditions, uh, where the win lose execution is. So I go in here, I now win and I can't even lose anymore. Doesn't matter how deep I fall because the variable is set. One thing, the last thing about triggers, and then that's the end of the video. This trigger here only works when there is a rigid body on the other side or on the same side. Triggers have to have one rigid body. Either the trigger element has it or the hitting element. One of those two has to have the uh, rigid body. If both of them have it, it doesn't work. If none of them have it, none of it work, uh, won't work. If one of them has it, perfect. Okay, great. So now we've got those. We just have this output here in the command line. In the next videos, we will find out how we can actually restart the level, go to the next level and so on and so on. But that has been 13 minutes. I thank you for watching. I hope you're staying safe out there. I hope you're staying healthy out there. I hope you're staying happy out there. I do that in here wherever I am, but it's great. Thank you guys for watching. If this is any helpful, if you're making progress with the game, leave a comment, leave a like, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and bye-bye, bye, bye-bye.